Hi guys, and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Workshop. In this video, I have moved a little bit up along the next ray rocket, still lying here in our heated part of the workshop. And I'm going to show you and tell you a little bit about uh, the part of the next ray 2 rocket that makes this rocket very special and very different from the, uh, from the next ray 1 rocket, uh, and that is the DPR system. Probably some of you have already seen it in some of our other videos, and I will put in some links up here where you can click later and, uh, and go more in depth about the DPR system and how it works. But today I'm just going to show you the system as it is implemented in the rocket and tell you about how it works and what we expect from it. Basically, DPR is all about maintaining a constant pressure in the tanks. When you have a rocket engine uh, performing and burning, you want to feed that engine with a constant flow of propellant and oxidizer. In our case, we are using ethanol and we are using liquid oxygen. You want to feed the engine with a con constant flow at a constant pressure of both propellants to make that engine burn at its, at, at, at its, its optimum rate at, at all times. And on the Nixer 1 rocket, the way we did that was, and this is a very standard way of doing it, we have the two tanks, we fill them about two-thirds with fuel and oxidizer, and then we pressurize the tanks with helium. And the principle is very simple. It's, it, it's the same uh, you would have in a water rocket, for example, if you know those water bottle rockets. You fill it a little, a little bit with a liquid, and then you pump it up, and when you release the aperture of the of the container, then all the the high the high pressure inside the uh, the container wants to get out through that little hole, and that is basically what is pushing the liquid out of the uh, of the aperture of the container. It is the pressure difference between the inside and the outside, and that's a very easy way to feed propellant into the rocket engine. The problem is, as you could maybe imagine, that when you do this then you don't have a constant pressure because as the air escapes from the container, the, pr the pressure in the container drops and thus also the, the flow of propellant will drop slowly. So when you do that, you won't have a steady constant rate of flow out of the, uh, of the container and in this case the tanks. This is pretty much why you would use some kind of regulation system or a pump, for example. The very best thing would be to use a turbo pump. In the, in the case of Nexu, Nexu and Nexu 2, these rockets are way too small to accommodate any kind of, of a pump. And also a, a pump is uh, very complicated. It's something that we're looking at and hopefully sometime in the future we will be able to, to build a turbo pump. But for the Nexu 2 rocket and also for the first implementation of the speaker rocket, we will be using a DPR system. And the DPR system is what you see here. It is simply the same as we had the last time, two tanks, but we have added one more component and that is a high pressure tank. And you can see it just down here. You can see the end of the tank. This tank here is a standard aluminum diving bottle that has been wrapped with a carbon fiber so that it can hold more pressure uh, while keeping the weight down. And this little bottle here will be pressurized to 350 bars with helium, so it contains a huge amount of helium. And then you can see here we have the regulating system. This is two valves. These two valves are controlled by the engine controller that we looked at in a previous video down at the other end of the rocket. And these two valves will then lead gas into both the propellant and the oxidizer tank so that the tanks will maintain the same pressure at all times and that way the rocket engine will be fed with a constant flow of both propellants so that we can secure optimum optimum performance and we can get much more altitude out of the of the rocket of course this also comes with a price because the rocket gets heavier but even with a rocket that is heavier, Nexu 2 is, is heavier than Nexu 1 because of this addition, and we will also uh, carry more fuel than we did on the, uh, on the Nexu 1. Even, even though we have all these extra components, this rocket will still fly 
uh, at least theoretically uh, about uh, about uh, five kilometers higher than the uh, the Nixie one was uh, was able to. So all in all, uh, this is uh, this is a, a very uh, interesting and very uh, clever way of doing it, and we look very much forward to see how it performs because this system is the last component we need to test, and this is the basis. Uh, that we need to make the uh, the speaker class rocket works. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit and all-volunteer project. We all work for free. But it's because of you out there that we can build all these magnificent machines and share all the results with you. So please go to our website and sign up as a Copenhagen Suborbital supporter because it's your contributions and your donations that makes everything possible. Thank you, rocket fans.